Hi everyone and welcome to this video. So this is the lithium ion cell capacity checker and here we've made a lot of progress. So last time I went through uh, some you know final design bit of code and whatever but this time uh, in the in the week uh, I've created the fritzing file with the schematic and a matrix board layout and all that. Anyway what happened is that I I exported the the uh, file, the schematic file, and as soon as I exported it, the thing crashed and it corrupted the file. And after hours of me drawing the schematic and whatever, it's now gone. It's completely gone. But anyway, I I did successfully export the image, so whatever. I'm going to share that with you. But the fritzing file itself was gone. Um, so I've got that, and I've got the code, and I want to share the code with you today as well. And uh, you can have a look and make any modifications. So first of all. I'm going to go over this and explain how it works. I mean, you all know how it works anyway, because you've been following the videos, but I'll just summarise. So, uh, we've got the cell holder, <coughs> and off the anode, you can see there are two wires, and off the cathode, there are two wires. So the black wire goes down here to the load. Uh, I call this, this, this loop here, I call it the drain loop. But it goes from the load, and it goes to two resistors. Now, you can see that I've changed that, because it used to be one uh, aluminium clad resistor, and it was 100 watt, 1 ohm. But this is more appropriate. Because I've changed the wiring and all that, this wiring's a lot better, and the resistances have all changed. So I've changed this to two 3.3 ohm resistors in parallel. And two resistors in parallel basically um, equates to half of the resistance of one. And that's because there's, more, there's double the cross-sectional area, and therefore less resistance. Anyway, getting to the point... This is a 3.3 ohm resistor, this is a 3.3 ohm resistor, and therefore the two in parallel equates to 1.65 ohms. So that's my load resistor, two, uh, two resistors equates to 1.65 ohms. Then from here, I've got a black wire going to the MOSFET, which is down here, and the, as you've noticed here, there's no heatsink, um, and there's only one MOSFET. That's because I've dealt with that problem. It was getting overheated, but I've dealt with it. Uh, it was a it was a mixture of well it was two different things um, it was poor wiring basically and um, yeah well I'll just say it was one thing it was poor wiring um, the design and the wire wiring wasn't quite perfect um, it was to do with the the voltage which the uh, base pin was getting um, it was to do with the difference between that and and ground of course um, so now it gets more voltage uh, it it closes uh, more effectively and therefore doesn't generate as much heat. Anyway, so then the MOSFET is the switch and then the uh, the black wire here closes the drain loop and then back to the cathode. So now you can see that there are two blue wires that come off this. This one here, this one on the left, this one goes to A0 and that's so I can sense the voltage of the cell. And this one here on the right on the cathode, that goes directly to ground so that we can link the uh, cathode of the cell to Arduino ground which is a lot more useful for when it comes to measuring because we, we, we need the reference to be set. Um, so that's that. Now over here as well on the on the drain loop there are two more blue wires. There's one here and there's one here. This is the preload. Uh, this allows us to see the preload voltage because it's the voltage after this after any drops down here but before the actual load and this one here is post load so this is after the after the drop here uh, after this one and then here but it's before the drop of the MOSFET and this wire here so uh, preload voltage post load voltage and that lets us see the uh, voltage drop across the resistor or resistors and because we know the resistance of that we can work out amperage etc if you've been following the videos you'll you'll know all this um, so that's that, that's the drain loop. Now over here, you can see that I've got the little screen, I've got a button, and I've got a RGB LED. And you've got these little ribbons as well. Um, I had these spare from uh, destroying a TV ages ago, so I thought I'd use them. They're quite useful. Anyway, so down here, let's have a look. So I've done it in this sort of, I don't know, this sort of fashion, if you like. So there's going to be a, a, probably a box or something there. There'll be a grill or something on top of here so that these can, I don't know, the hot air can uh, dissipate quicker and then there'll be a case over here with just showing the 
the screen and probably put a button on a case or something and let the RG, let the LED come through the case. But anyway, so it's kind of like that, like a rectangular sort of thing. Um, but anyway, moving on. So over here, I've got the mini, sorry, not mini, micro USB connector. I've got a capacitor which I've added. And this is a 330 microfarad, um, 6.3 volt capacitor. Um, and I've done that because it seems to stabilise the um, the internal voltage reading with a capacitor. I suppose that makes sense, really, because you don't want any fluctuations in it. Um, then I've got the three resistors, as you already know. Uh, they are, if I remember right, are they 5K? I think they probably are. Got the three of those. Then I've got the Pro Mini, which is actually on headers, so I can pull it off. If there's a problem, I can pull it off. It might be a bit stiff, but let's give it a go. Oh, there you go. So I can pull that off. And then, you know, obviously push it back in so I can replace it. I can flash different versions and whatever else and just pull it off, put it like plug and play. Yeah, you can see the buzzer there. And you've got more resistors here. I can't remember what they are. Is it 70 ohms for the, for the red LED? Um, and then probably 150 or some, something like that um, for the green and blue. So you can see the two resistors there. Over here I've got two resistors which, well, basically form a, a voltage divider. And I, I can't remember the exact resistances, but they'll be on, on the list somewhere in the description. And these basically drive the, um, the, the MOSFET. So that's that. And then going back over here, I've got all the necessary connections to uh, get the little screen to work and the RGB LED. Now it just turns out that the RGB LED, I, I accidentally shorted it with a soldering iron and I, and I uh, broke one of, the, one of the LEDs within it. I think it's the red one maybe. But anyway, uh, that's that. So I'm going to show you the thing working now. So you can power this thing in two ways. You can either power it there, which is the, the main way, um, or you can power it from a UART converter. And um, I'm going to do it with the UART converter, because with the UART converter, you can power it and also get diagnostics at the same time. So I'm going to push these on here, and here it is. Let's push that back down, like that, and plug it in. And now, because, I've, because I'm powering it with this thing, I can also get the serial statistics back and, uh, and read, you know, any messages and whatever else. Right, so I also need a cell. Where's the cell? Right, I've got one here. So, let me just uh, check the voltage of the thing. Let's see. It is... 3.92 volts. So, 3.92 volts. I'll just put this over in there and let's see what happens. Right, so I've put the cell in, 3.92, and I'll say insert cell now, press when ready, so hang on, I'll just zoom in. That's a bit better, isn't it? Insert cell now, press when ready, so I'll press, and it says voltage 3.91. Okay, I can deal with that, that's uh, 10 millivolts out, well, potentially. You know, these multimeters have their own inaccuracies anyway, so yeah, that's good. 3.91, now this has taken me some time to calibrate this thing properly and I'll, I'll try and explain that later so press the start and it says uh, it's draining 3.6 a 3.66 and I'll just check this with the voltmeter yep 3.67 the voltmeter say and 3.66 so it's it's absolutely perfect and um, it took so long for me to, to get this accurate um, so um, you know we can let the thing let the thing finish and drain the cell and whatever. And when it's drained, it goes green and it says the amount of um, uh, milliamps. Um, and you know all the other stuff like how many milliamp hours and whatever. And that's it. And then it goes back over here. Insert cell now. Press and ready. Gives you the voltage. And then you know the rest. I mean we've already been through that. But anyway. Um, that was just showing you it working really. Let's just zoom out again. And you can have a quick look. And there we go. So, um, I'm cautious of making this video way too long, so I'm probably going to cut it short now. But in the next video, 
I'm going to go through uh, the calibration, like how I how I calibrated this thing, and I'm going to go through the code and explain how it works, and uh, I might even go through the schematic as well. But anyway, whatever happens, I'm going to aim to release the schematic and the code today. So um, thanks to everyone who's been watching this series. Uh, there is probably one or two more videos to come, maybe depending on your feedback and whatever else, but thanks very much to everyone who watched this series, and um, if you do this project, um, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it works for you. Thank you again. Bye.